Hello and welcome everybody to this week's Dev Central Connects. Uh, my name is Boo, Community Evangelist with the Dev Central team, and we're really looking forward to chatting with the community today. Uh, we have a bunch of things that are happening right now within Dev Central that I'm going to talk about here, and some changes that are coming up uh, for how we're approaching some of the content that we're doing. So really looking forward to all of that. I think it's uh, maybe it's one of those new year, new you kind of things. Uh, but we really want to make sure that we're deepening the connections with the community. And so I think we have some strategies up our sleeve that uh, we'll be able to address that. Uh, first of all, first and foremost, Dev Central Connects is in support of our community um, uh, endeavors, uh, which kind of center around community community.f5.com. So that is the Dev Central community. Head over to that website. We have a lot of stuff happening there. All of our technical articles are published there. Um, all of our um, uh, message forums are on there. Uh, we have uh, additional ways to connect with the Dev Central uh, Connects team as well. So myself, Aubrey, and Jason, and Peter are actually found in a group hub on there called uh, Dev Central Connects. Uh, inside of there as well. So we would love for everybody to join that. And we'll talk about a couple of the reasons why you would like to join that as well. Um, now, if you are watching this and you haven't been on uh, the website before, uh, we are streaming to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and YouTube right now. So wherever you're watching from, make sure you're subscribed uh, on there and you have your notifications turned on as well. We'll also talk about a reason for that as well. Um, Actually, maybe we'll get into that now, but we have, uh, so a couple of the changes that are coming up here. Um, we're just kind of shifting focus a little bit on, on Dev Central Connects. And, and what I mean by that is that uh, we hear your feedback. You know, if we weren't listening to your feedback, we, weren't, we wouldn't be serving our community. And so we listen to the feedback that we get. And um, it sounds like people want to go deeper on certain topics and certain topics that they want to, um, or certain types of content that we have, they want to kind of pair off and, and, um, you know, be selective in how they uh, uh, get to watch that content. And so we're listening to that. And so um, what you'll see over the next few weeks here is that the Dev Central Connects show, live show that we do now is still here so that we can interact with people live and, and directly wherever you're coming in from. We do this at a specific time so that we can catch the most amount of people as possible and so that uh, myself and Jason and Aubrey can get a bit of sleep as well. Um, so we're not too early. Um, but this, this Dev Central Connects will act as kind of a bit of a narrative across the Dev Central community. So we'll highlight all the things that the community is doing uh, through Dev Central Connects. And then you would have actually seen last week, Jason did a live coding session. So stuff like that. Um, now that session there was about an hour long. Um, and that one, that was like deep dive into some iRule coding uh, that Jason was working on. So he had a geolocation uh, I rule that was being revamped. And so he took the time to do that live with folks. And that was really well received. And we could, un we understood that the community loves stuff like that. When we do these live streams, Dev Central Connects, uh, we're trying to mix in a, a bunch of content. So that type of content We'll keep running with Jason's going to keep running with that type of content, and that type of content will just kind of act separately um, from this live stream. So you can kind of pick and choose. You can see when stuff comes up. Um, so for something like the live coding session, what Jason will do is we'll actually leverage our Dev Central Connects group on community community.f5.com, and you'll get a heads up on there. So you head over to the group, you join the group. I'll actually walk you through that right now and what that looks like. I'm in the group right now, uh, but if you were to actually, you know, if you were on the Dev Central homepage here, community.f5.com, you'll see of our content on here. You head over to groups, community groups, and Dev Central Connects. I've already joined the group, but if you haven't joined the group already, you'll actually be prompted to just join the group. It's free. There's there's no cost to that. Uh, and then you can join that, and you'll get a heads up as to when Jason is doing those live coding sessions. Um, you know, sometimes that's something that Jason identifies, and then he proceeds with that idea and we, we would call that a, a, a bit of a pop-up show and so he might have like a couple days notice 48 hours notice if you're heading to the if you're watching the Dev Central Connects groups otherwise if you are subscribed to like say YouTube or, or LinkedIn or something like that you'll actually get a pop-up notification if you have your notifications turned on so you just if you are on one of those you'll find out anyways that uh, that one of those pop-up shows are happening and then you can interact live and 
The beauty about live coding is that Jason can do that with the VS Code plugin to live to incorporate people live and be able to code side by side with you, and you can ask questions along the way. So, huge value in uh, in joining the group and and being a part of that and and getting to have that deeper interaction. Um, things like some of the interviews that we do. Um, you know, we realize that some of that content isn't necessarily what you expect out of the Dev Central uh, Connects live stream. You know, some of that we're incorporating announcements and stuff like that. So those will continue on, but some of those interviews will actually pair off and, and do separately as well. So we hear you. Uh, we're, we're making those changes so that we hopefully just kind of streamline the, the content that you're getting um, and make everything uh, uh, kind of a choose your own adventure as far as uh, what you'll what you'll be able to get from us. In addition to that as well, I'll also mention that uh, Aubrey actually just released, started releasing the security content that he's been doing in audio format, in podcast format. Dev Central Connects will also actually, um, uh, spoiler, is also going to be available in an audio podcast format very soon as well. And so um, that's just to kind of serve the people that aren't necessarily going to be watching video live streams anymore. We realize that people are um, <clears throat> uh, having commutes, they're in the car these days or on the train or on the bus uh, and going into the office. Um, and for some people, they just like to listen to this stuff on, on their walks or jogs or stuff like that. And so we want to uh, make sure it's available there as opposed to you know forcing people to kind of sit down in front of the computer and watch us on a video live stream all the time. In doing so, we will try to be cognizant of that and try to make sure that the content isn't always you know, like I just did, I, I pulled up something on screen, so we can't assume everybody's watching everything on a screen anymore. So we'll we'll do our best to make sure that we accommodate that kind of stuff, uh, and accommodate an, an audio podcast. Um, so a couple of the things that I wanted to mention, uh, speaking of community, things that are happening within the community. Uh, first of all, we do have a community lab that's coming up, and I'm, I'm going to do the thing that I was just talking about not doing on a video or on an audio podcast. Um, but if you head over into our events section, let's see which one's the events section on my tabs here. Okay, so if you head over to Dev Central and on the menu bar, you'll see events on there and you'll see a number of labs that are posted on there actually. So Leslie has been gathering things that are happening within the community uh, or within F5 that you might wanna participate in. And one of those things is this community lab. And this was posted actually a few months back in Dev Central in the Dev Central Connects group. And we were talking about, hey, let's let's spin up another lab. Jason had a great time doing the uh, Capture the Flag lab. So we'll do another lab here. This is the uh, ANO toolchain. ANO stands for Automation and Orchestration Toolchain 212, Application Deployments with Big IP and AS3. I know a lot of people are using this and this was voted up within the Dev Central Connects group as the next lab that we should do. So all you have to do is head over to the Events tab, find this lab and you just uh, hit yes that you'll be attending. You have to be logged into Dev Central, but hit yes that you're attending. And then from there, I'll get you all signed up using your Dev Central um, uh, registered email account. Um, if you if you want to use a different email account, say you've registered with an account that you don't really check very much, um, just let me know. Just ping me, PM me, or, or whatever, and I can get you signed up with a different account. And we'll be doing this starting on Tuesday, December thirteenth, nine thirty. Uh, AM Pacific time, so directly after our live stream. And we'll just kind of kick it off with a one hour walkthrough of how the lab's going to go. And then we'll leave the lab open for 72 hours. So you don't actually have to be there live with us to get through um, the first part of the lab. We'll have it live streamed and then you can rewatch the live stream uh, potentially directly after just to uh, just to get things going. Um, okay, a couple other things is um, we talked about Jason's iRule live session. I had that note there. Um, there is a new video that came out that I wanted to highlight as well. This one, Handling IP Overlap with F5 Distributed Cloud Multi-Cloud Networking. Uh, so if you go over to youtube.com slash devcentral and look at the videos on there, there is this video over here. Just wanted to highlight that as a community contribution from Mr. Pres Preston Ashworth. He has great videos whenever he uh, contributes um, those to us. So really uh, glad that he had that one there. And it's a, it's a problem that people are trying to solve as they integrate with new business units or they start to combine networks. Um, another thing that I'll mention here as well is that Dan Woods, now he's not 
part of the community, our community necessarily, but we consider him a, a good friend to the community. He's actually at AWS reInvent this week, and he has a lightning talk at uh, on November 30th. So tomorrow at 11.45 a.m., session ID PRT019. So you always want to listen to Dan Wood's talk. He's always a, a great presenter, and that is uh, that should be a good one there. And then one more that I will highlight here in community stuff is this one here. Uh, Leslie puts together this community highlights every week. And so a couple things that we will highlight is she has uh, gone through and um, picked out all the folks who have been answering questions diligently on the forum. So uh, Mohammed, uh, Nikolay, uh, CA Valley, and Kai, and uh, Mihe, and Boneyard, a um, number of our MVPs on that list. So thank you very much for answering uh, questions on the forums for others. Kai actually shared uh, this solution here, or two solutions here, iRule-based radius checks, iRule-based radius health monitor builder. So do check out those contributions on there. And a uh, number of kudoed, kudoed authors and giving out kudos and top kudoed posts on there as well. So a lot of stuff to check out on there. Thank you everybody for contributing to the community. That's what community is uh, is all about. Uh, a couple of the things that I will highlight. Um, I, I wanted to go through all these, but I'm not going to go through them. There's a whole bunch of Nginx uh, uh, products that were just updated. Nginx Instance Manager, Nginx Management Suite, Security Monitoring, Nginx Plus R28, Nginx App Protect 4.0, Nginx App Protect DDoS 3.1. Um, so if you are uh, an Nginx customer, uh, and working with Nginx Solutions, you want to check out all of those updates that have just been released. And then um, having gone through all of that, I'm going to bring on Jason in just a moment here. But what I will do is uh, our Aubrey has left us with a highlight from uh, This Week in Security. So I'm going to play that and then we will bring on uh, Jason after that and we'll go through uh, a few more things. Hey, F5 community and security aficionados, Aubrey here with Dev Central, and wanted to give you a gentle reminder that the SIRT, the Security Incident Response Team, has released this week in security, and we've got the editor Kyle underscore Fox. So if you want uh, any follow-up on what was written, check out the article, and you can definitely contact Kyle Fox regarding uh, questions with that. But uh, this week we cover physical security and Twitter as well as a snippet on uh, Apple's iPhone 14 and some satellite SOS capabilities that will be included in it. Uh, lastly, a bit of miscellanea with an article not to be missed about the new SANS ICS hyper encabulator, which will be extraordinarily uh, useful to any of you who are uh, well-schooled about encabulation. Thanks for checking it out, and as always, have a great F5 day. All righty. Thanks, Aubrey, for uh, throwing in this week in security. Jason, if you are good, you can, you can join in, but I don't want to uh, presume here. There I am good. Yeah, had a <laughs> had a an important call I had to take, and I was like, "Oh no!" So no worries, those happen. How are you doing yep. this week, Jason? I am quite well. Um, awesome. You know, no no post Thanksgiving uh, turkey coma because I, like we went to both families, but my my dad always does a fried turkey, and uh, and it came out, and you could just smell when it came out of things like something's not right. So I don't know if it was like rancid meat or or whatever oh, no. but but bad bad news and so we're we're all very sad we had ham instead uh oh. yeah so but it was good that was a good backup plan ham lots of that ready to go um <clears throat> very cool well i was uh uh excited this week because we actually posted and I, I mentioned this before, but we post about stuff on the Def Central Connects group yeah. so every week we post ahead of time uh, what the show is going to be about, what we're a link to the show, and then the news articles that we're going to talk about. And so I encourage folks to actually jump in uh, if you'd like and actually leave comments about the news articles that you've seen. Or 
leave comments about stuff that you want to talk about. Not everybody can join live. And so this is a way to actually get your participation on the uh, live stream without actually being live on the live stream. But we can mention stuff that's happening on there. So these are the articles that we have to chat about today from the industry. But we have a number of um, comments on here as well. Uh, Leif Zimmerman, um, talking about deep fakes, this is uh, something that he actually uh, sent to us, uh, sent to our team uh, previously on these neural radiance fields, uh, but allows you to actually create deep fakes that are like an entire environment as well. So it's a really cool video. Uh, I won't play it right now inside of here, but I encourage folks to check that out um, because we have been talking about deep fakes. Uh, there's a there's a deep fake article in the news uh, this week. Um, so that's something to check out. Uh, Pasilva mentions, how about bringing on the current featured member for that month? Folks, if you're a featured member, would love to um, have you on. If, if you're up for being on live, if the time zone works for you, if we want to do something, um, you know, in, a, a video in, in uh, conjunction with the article that is released about the featured member, we'd love to do something like that as well. We'd love to, uh, yeah, however you want to interact, but that's that's great. Our MVPs, you know, we're, we're open to having MVPs kind of jump on, like Kai, maybe talking about his solution, uh, something like that is great as well. Even like friends uh, of the show, you know, if you've been mm -hmm. with us for a while, uh, hit us up on, you know, email and maybe we'll uh, have you on to talk about what, uh, what's new in your world. Yeah, um, that we'd love to do stuff like that and have that interaction. Uh, Tony Hines, leader of Dev Central, actually asked the audience what topics they'd like to see discussed in the future. It doesn't have to be FRF related. And then Daniel Wolf uh, joins in. Um, so Leaf had actually had a thread uh, previously on home tech security, talking about his uh, uh, internet router firewall. And so, you know, Daniel kind of piles onto that. Uh, all the internet of useless things. I didn't notice that he said that actually, the useless things uh, we have at home and what to do with them, how to secure them. Will my coffee machine become part of a botnet because I cannot update the web server running on it? That's a fantastic uh, question and something that I think home labs in general and, and home networking is something that um, we need to dive in a little bit more on. I know Jason, myself, Aubrey, we have, um, we have NUX at home. Uh, as part of our home lab and home learning, that's always something that's big uh, for us and and for F five is people uh, don't you know don't trust a, a technologist without a home lab I would say or, or some sort of lab uh, environment and so um, um, in you know in part of that the IoT devices that are part of your home lab as well like mine's mine's kind of incorporated because I started running uh, Pi Hole at home yep. and it's giving me insight into you know, what some of these devices are doing. I need to pay closer attention to it, but I want to, you know, know what kind of calls it's making outbound, if any. Um, that kind of stuff uh, scares me a little bit. So yeah, I'd love to do more home tech, uh, home tech stuff because a lot of us are at home and we're building our labs at home. We're learning at home. Uh, a lot of people have uh, big IP lab licenses at home uh, to run to learn more about F5. So yeah, I'd love to do uh, more content around that. Yeah, so for most of the devices that were like home devices, Pi Hole is probably the best bet you have um, initially. Uh, it's cheap and mm -hmm. and easy to do, and and you can you know run a lot of that DNS traffic to file eighty six um, if you block DNS outbound. Uh, as you know, the IoT devices get a little smarter and they start to do DNS over HTTP or DNS over you know TCP, and they start tunneling that stuff. Um, you know, maybe it gets mm -hmm. a little bit harder, but you could do something like a, uh, you know, secure web gateway uh, on the F5 side uh, with a with a lab license, or uh, maybe maybe you don't get SWG with a lab license, but a but a small small VE. I know that you could uh, uh, do a lot of that um, DOH and um, uh, and DOT uh, inspection and, and blocking and make sure it you know uh, nefarious IoT devices or your children. Uh, who are trying to get around your uh, defenses? Uh, you know, you can you can you know stop that stuff. But yeah, it's a it's definitely a problem that that needs to be solved without the internets of everything. Um, you know, does your coffee maker really need to be reaching out? Um, and uh, I know they need to do updates and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it, it'd be nice if you had a little bit of control over that. Yeah, that's uh, actually you know I won't do it right now, but we'll go dig up. I think it was Kevin. 
even Kevin Stewart that wrote an article on DOH mm -hmm. uh, that's published on DevCentral. So we'll try to dig that up and, and put that out there. But yeah, maybe some home lab experiments incorporating some of the F5 stuff that we have or not F5 stuff that we have um, and how to run that. And that might help out our good friend Leaf as well. Yep. Cool. Okay, so a couple things uh, from the news in the last uh, 10 minutes that we have here. Uh, first one here, this one, Jason, you sent over. Tax filing websites have been sending users' financial information to Facebook. Yes, What's so I, I have several mail lists and, and uh, newsletters that I get. And, and this one, uh, not necessarily this article, but this issue, uh, as it's been covered around, was, was listed by every single one of them. And so, you know, I, I see that 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 actually doesn't happen very often. There, the the news I get on all of them are are, are fairly diverse, uh, but but this one, um, you know, was flagged by all of them, and it's it's crazy that uh, you know, and this is the uh, the Google Pixel service. Uh, a lot of companies will will use that uh, to make their their you know the business side, uh, the business uh, stuff a, a little bit uh, more palatable. Um, a little bit easier to 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 do business. Um, the challenge here is that uh, the service uh, collects a lot of data, and and so you know I um, like Tax Slayer, Tax Act, H and R Block. I think we're we're in here, but this uh, this service that they're using is not just you know collecting you know the the standard email name. Uh, address kind of stuff, but also as you're having your taxes prepared, yeah, you've got that up right there. Taking your adjusted gross income, how much you're getting for your your refund, the number of dependents you have in your house. So, um, and it, quick aside, I worked for a company called RL Polkin Company when I was uh, in college, and I worked for about, about six weeks. It was the worst job ever uh, okay. because I worked in a call center, and I, I literally had to call up and ask people those questions: How much money do you make? Uh, how many people are in your house? Who's the head of household? Um, you know, has anybody lost their job in the last year? It's like, you know, nobody wants to give that information up. And and so, you know, it's like got so many, you know, like like virtual door slams uh, asking those questions. And yet, you know, you go and you want your, you know, when you want to take care of your taxes and and you think you're just dealing with the company that you're dealing with. Uh, but that is not the case. Your, your data is being slurped. Um, and in this case, even even without, uh, uh, I said Google, but it's a, it's actually Meta. My apologies for mm -hmm. that. But the Meta Meta Pixel service, um, and uh, you know whether or not you have a Meta account or not, uh, that data is being collected. And so that's a that that's pretty bad. That that is not a good thing. And so um, if you use one of those services, um, you know you you may want to uh, you wanna, you may want to look into that if you use any of those companies that that do your taxes. Um, but yeah, not just not good. Not not a fan. Yeah, in on uh, you know there is a link. I think it's at the very top of the article itself. But there is a GitHub repo that uh, the markup the, um, the the news outlet that put this together um, went ahead and dumped some of the uh, screenshots that they were gathering for this. So there was a screenshot that I showed in the article itself. Yeah. And then if you head over to the GitHub repo, you can see their, the additional data that they gathered on here. So clearly they can, you know, they can see what your refund is going to be, which I can see could be helpful with advertising. You know, you might want to advertise right. different things to somebody who's getting a hundred dollar refund, as opposed to somebody who's getting an $8,000 refund. Uh, but at the same time, that's a little bit creepy. Yeah. And, uh, well, and they right. even, they even say that, I don't know if it was in that particular article, but one of the articles, they, they actually promote that as a good thing. It's like, hey, these, mm. these are these are good data points to have for your advertising. It's like, well, maybe for sure. the advertisers, but for the, you know, the privacy invasion, that's that's not good. Yeah, maybe they should uh, they should target the ads towards, hey, how can I save all of my money as opposed to spend it all <laughs> that's right. on, uh, on the stuff they have? But uh, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's how far people want to go with these things. Yeah. Um, okay, so next uh, article, this is one that I uh, found here just for fun experiment, deploying Kubernetes on two old laptops with Gen 2 Linux. And I thought this was neat because we were actually just chatting. Uh, I think myself, you and Aubrey and Peter were chatting about old laptops that we have laying around. So I actually just put it uh, downstairs in my crawl space, but I got an old uh, i7 laptop actually. 
uh, and I have a, a Mac uh, Core 2 Duo uh, as well, laptop. And and here, this person's done this with a, a Intel Core i5 and an Intel Core 2 Duo laptop. This compact 6720, this thing is ancient. Um, <laughs> and so... Uh, and so they go through the installation of Kubernetes on here and they do it, you know, pretty, uh, this is the Kubernetes, the almost Kubernetes the hard way, I think, uh, that yeah. they've done it here. Very detailed. Uh, You're definitely stuff. getting into understanding your, uh, your system limitation management. And it reminds me like in the early days, like with uh, uh, PHP system management, all the little different flags you had to set to, to be able to, mm -hmm. to run on the limitation of your machine and, and, uh, and going through some Solaris hacks for, for old, you know, I had this like uh, spark five um, pizza box of a, of a Solaris server um, from sun and, you know, getting the, the newer versions to run on that uh, newer versions, which happened to be like 20 something years ago. Uh, was was not uh, an exercise for the faint of heart, but like like anything that you tear down and build back up, you you learn a lot in the process. So that's a that's a, that's a cool experience. Yeah, maybe this is uh you know I, I can pull up my old laptop or or both of them, and actually this could be a, a fun little pop up uh, event that we can have. I don't know if we could pull it off in under an hour though. We might need a little bit more time for all of this. So maybe we can do it and we can break it up in pieces. Anyways, if anybody has series. Yeah, it, it might be, which I'm okay with doing that uh, as well. We could we could totally break it up. So if people have that as a suggestion or you know, if people want to see that maybe post up in the uh, in the Dev Central Connects group on the show thread if that sounds interesting to you. If you have your own you know, set of uh, a couple laptops that you want to uh, participate in this. Maybe we can make a thing out of it. Um, but that's all stuff that we would discuss in the Dev Central Connects group. Uh, if we're going to announce a pop-up show or anything like that, and you want to join in for some live hacking on old laptops uh, for your home lab uh, purposes, we can totally do something like that. Um, okay, maybe we'll do one more quick article here. And... Uh, Let's open up a can of worms here because we're talking about Teslas, Elon Musk, electric vehicles. What's not to uh, <laughs> what's not exciting about this right now? Uh, but maybe just focusing on the Tesla Semi part of it. Tesla Semi completes its first 500 mile trip with a full load. So what's a what does it define as a full load here? Uh, Eighty thousand pound class eight capable of traveling eight three hundred to five hundred miles. So yeah, we're here, and I think it noted in the article that these are going to be delivered uh, this week. Production versions delivered of the truck to customers this week. Very exciting. Yeah, and I think the the like the the range is the important thing because it gets uh, it gets their drivers to a full a full workday. So mm. you know this looks like maybe more long haul uh, than than you know in in town kind of thing not that the in town you know wouldn't also be valuable but but mm -hmm. this is you know to really allow for for the long haul trips uh getting to that 500 mile and allowing you know drivers to complete their full whatever their limitation is their their eight hour before they have to take a break or whatever mm -hmm. yeah and uh, yeah it amazes me because you know pulling that much weight is no small feat right that's that's a lot of inertia to overcome and a lot of drag resistance to overcome with with batteries and and to pull that much weight for that far uh, you think that this you look at that picture how much of that truck is batteries <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty incredible um uh, they they did note here you know tesla was beat by other companies volvo freightliner nikola to the class A electric semi trucks but none of them reached this range and so yeah. this uh for Tesla to go production with this much range kind of shows, you know, how, how far they've come with battery technology, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, really cool to, to see that happen. I used to actually work at a truck, stop, truck stop. That was my first job oh, uh, really? in cool. at the end of high school. And, and just after high school for a little bit, I uh, was working at a, a truck stop. So I'd see the truckers come in. I would see them come in after a long day as well. You know, I can't imagine like, with the Tesla Semi, I would imagine there's a lot of really great features for driver's assistance. You hear about really tragic stories about, um, you know, uh, 
maybe truck drivers who, um, you know, are tired during their um, trips and stuff like that and might get into a bit of an accident or, or yeah. you know, really bad accidents and stuff like that. And this this can help out a lot. I know for for me, I have a, a little Model 3 and, and using things like autopilot really decreases driver fatigue on long drives. Like we head up to my in-laws and that's four and a half hours away. And being able to do that truck or do that trip with uh, something like uh, autopilot, I get there with 100% more energy than I do if I'm doing that drive on a on a classic vehicle. Um, yeah. So yeah, really cool that we we've got something like this. What so for the auto drive or whatever? What what's your responsibility? Because I've I've heard conflicting arguments on on you know how uh, attentive and active people really stay but what yeah. like as far as the guidance from tesla the the legal ramifications from you know your uh jurisdiction up there in canada what is what is your responsibility as the driver in that scenario well i mean as far as like keeping the car moving you have to so it's in autopilot it, it sees the lines on the road and keeps you within the lines and at your speed and a certain distance away from the car in front of you and then at that point you just have to keep your hands on the wheel and it will detect and i think it it detects when your hands are off the wheel and at a certain point it gives you a warning and i believe the faster you go the shorter that warning is and so, you know, if you have your hands off for like five seconds or so, it'll start beeping at you and saying, get your hands back on the wheel. And it kind of gives you strikes to that. I can't remember how many strikes there are. I think there's like per drive, I think there might be like three strikes. If you kind of violate that, yeah. it actually makes you pull off the road and you have to turn off the car. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, um, you can restart the car and, and get back on your trip again, but it, you know, it makes you pull off the road. So potentially if you were falling asleep or something like that, you know, in that scenario there, it gets you off the road and maybe you did need to turn, th turn things off and take a break. Yeah. Do you have to have like the 10 and two or like, cause like I drive like with just my left hand at about seven o'clock. Yeah. Most of the yeah, time. I just, <laughs> yeah. About same for me, as long as you have something, uh, something on there that's, that's weighing it down. They, uh, yeah, I don't think they have any sensors that can tell where exactly your hands are. They can just tell that there's pressure on the wheel. Okay. They just have like a capacitive touch in there somewhere. I don't even know if it's that. I think it's resistance against the wheel. Cause when you, when the wheels or when autopilot is engaged, you could feel that the, the wheel is kind of moving on its own. Oh gosh. So, so the, like the back um, pressure on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Good times. Maybe I can drive a semi one day. <laughs> that would be an interesting test drive. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Jason, today. Thank you to the community for joining us as well. Thank you to the contributions that we have had in the Dev Central Connects group. I just want to remind everybody, hit subscribe, hit like. That helps us out. And make sure your notifications are turned on and you're part of the Dev Central Connects group because then you can find out about pop-up shows that are coming up uh, maybe 48 hours in advance before other people would find out and you can kind of plan around that or start to seed questions inside of the show threads as well so that we can talk about that. Um, otherwise, really looking forward to um, serving the community better through focused content on, on the stuff that you want to see. So thanks everybody for joining us this week and we will see you all next week. Take care, everyone. Bye all. Well, thanks for checking out that video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. While you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. You might want to check out one of these videos over here. And if you haven't already, go check out community.f5.com. This is where all the Dev Central Connects hosts hang out, as well as the rest of the community. It's free to sign up, and we'll see you there.